Today on The Hookup, we're going to look at how to easily add a wired door sensor to a Tasmatized Sunoff Basic. Every once in a while, it's nice to do something simple. A project that can be completed in under an hour that provides great new functionality. In my video about my most used smart home products, I mentioned that I've gotten a bunch of use out of the door sensors on the interior of our house. Specifically, the one on my daughter's bedroom door. When my daughter was a bit younger, we had an incident where she got sick and ran into our bathroom to throw up. Normally, my wife and I would have heard her from downstairs and gone to help, but we happened to be out on the patio enjoying some nice weather that night. By the time we figured out something was wrong, the bathroom was a disaster and my daughter was a little bit distraught. To prevent this from ever happening again, I've installed a door sensor on her bedroom door that flashes the patio lights if her door gets opened after her bedtime. The best part about this project was how much functionality it adds for such a small amount of time and money invested. As you probably know, a Sonoff Basic is a $5 internet connected relay that powers itself off of your mains voltage. It works natively with the EWI Link app, but I really don't like the idea of using a cloud service to control mains power devices in my house. So I've never even installed that app. Instead, all of my Sonoff devices run a custom firmware that's called Tasmoda. If you've never flashed a Sonoff with Tasmoda, I'm going to send you over to Dr. Z's in just a minute for the most recent tutorial on how to get that done. If you buy a new Sonoff Basic, the holes that you need to access on the circuit board are going to come filled with solder. Dr. Z's has a fancy 3D printed tool that he uses in the video, but since we need to be able to use these holes for our project anyways, I'm going to suggest that you just install some header pins in there instead. To do this, you'll need a soldering iron. Wait, don't go. Soldering is a great skill to have, and it's not nearly as hard as you think. A cheap soldering iron like this one is all you need, and for around $20, you get a ton of other good stuff with it. To easily add the header pins, I'd recommend that you add them one at a time. So take your header pins out and cut them at the notches in the black plastic. We'll do this so that we don't have to heat up all four holes at the same time to insert the pins. Hold on to the pin right above the black plastic with a pair of needle nose pliers or the tweezers that are included with your soldering kit. Then, after you've lined up the pin with the hole on the top of the board, apply heat to the hole from the bottom of the board, which will melt the solder and allow you to push the pin through. Repeat five times for each of the five holes and you're all done. The first pin might take you a minute to get the hang of it, but once you've done one, the other four will go easy. Once you've got those pins installed, you'll be ready to flash Tasmoda. And like I said, if you've never done it before, Dr. Z's has a great walkthrough of the current best way to get it done. Click this link to go there now. But don't forget to come back when you're done. Once we've got Tasmoda flashed, take a look around your room and decide which device you'd like to be able to turn on and off. Keep in mind that the relay of a Sonoff is only rated for 10 amps, so I wouldn't recommend space heaters or portable air conditioning units, but pretty much anything else should be fine. In my daughter's room, she has an air purifier that provides white noise when she's sleeping, but she doesn't like having it on when she's watching her iPad in her room. With this Sonoff, she can just ask her Echo Dot to turn off the annoying fan and the Sonoff will shut off the power to it. But that's not really the star of this show. This Sonoff is also responsible for monitoring the state of my daughter's door and setting it up is super easy. All you need is a magnetic reed switch, a little bit of wire, and that soldering iron from before. Links to my favorite reed switches and the wires that I use for my door sensors are down in the description. All we need to do is connect our reed switch to GPIO 14 and ground on your Sonoff. You can either solder some wire directly to the headers we put on earlier or you can use a female jumper wire to make it a little easier to connect and disconnect. I recommend the latter because it makes putting your Sonoff back together much easier once we've got everything connected. You can see that I drilled a medium sized hole in the top of my Sonoff cover to be able to run the wires through the top. If you're worried about someone messing with these wires, you can always just fill the hole with hot glue after you're done. And it makes everything a little bit more permanent. You can run your wire for your reed switch under the baseboard to your door. I actually had clearance on mine to be able to put the magnet all the way under the door so it's completely hidden. Once you've got everything in place, 
You just need to run some console commands in the Tasmoda interface and add some entries to your Home Assistant configuration file. The first thing we need to do is set up our switch. After navigating to the IP address of your Sonoff, you'll click on Configuration and then Configure Module. We're going to hit the drop down box for GPIO 14 and select Switch 2 and then hit Save and then hit Main Menu to get back. Tasmoda is going to think that you want Switch 2 to control the relay. So you'll notice that opening and closing your door will now shut off the device that you have connected. In my case, that's the air purifier. The next thing we need to do is we need to decouple the switch from the relay. We'll do this using console commands. So click on console in the main menu and then type switch topic space and then whatever you want to call this door and hit enter. It's probably a good idea to make sure you're in switch mode one. So also type in switch mode two space one and press enter. The last thing we want to do is retain the last message that the switch sent in the event that Home Assistant restarts. To do this, you'll type in switch retain space on and then press enter. Next, you'll need to set up Home Assistant or Open Hab or whatever you're using to monitor your doors. And it needs to respond to the MQTT messages we just set up. I'm going to show the setup in Home Assistant because it's what I use. You'll want to add a binary sensor to your configuration.yaml file and we're going to define our platform as MQTT, we'll name it whatever we want, and our state topic will be CMND front slash, and then whatever you named your switch topic, front slash power2. Define the payload on as on and the payload off as off. Finally, you should set up the device class as a door. You can also set up a switch in Home Assistant for whatever you're controlling. This is what that configuration looks like. You'll notice that the main difference here is that the state topic and the command topic are just power instead of power2 because we set up our switch as switch2. At this point you can save, check your config, and then restart Home Assistant. Now that you've got the sensor up and running, you just need to decide what you want it to do. I do all my automations in Node Red, but of course you can use whatever you're most comfortable with. For more information on how to set up automations in Node Red, check out my Mastering Node Red series. Thank you so much to my new Patreon supporters this week. Your support and kind words really motivate me to keep working hard on these videos. This time next week, I'll announce the winner of my first giveaway where I'm going to send one of my patrons all of the hardware required to make my DIY motorized shades. Even if you don't support me on Patreon, I'd like to thank everyone who has watched and commented on my content. I've really enjoyed the opportunity to help the community grow and I hope you've learned something new from my videos. If you enjoy these videos, please consider subscribing. And as always, thanks for watching The Hookup.